If you would, please open God's Bible to Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7, we'll start in verse 14. Mark 7, picking up in verse 14. And it reads, After he called the crowd to him again, he began saying to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside the person which can defile him if it goes into him. But the things which come out of the person are what defile the person. And when he later entered a house, away from the crowd, his disciples asked him about the parable. And he said to them, Are you so lacking in understanding as well? Do you not understand that whatever goes into the person from outside cannot defile him, because it does not go into his heart, but into his stomach, and is eliminated? Thereby he declared all foods clean. And he was saying, that which comes out of the person, that is what defiles the person. For from within, out of the hearts of people, come the evil thoughts, acts of sexual immorality, thefts, murders, acts of adultery, deeds of greed, wickedness, deceit, indecent behavior, envy, slander, pride, in foolishness, all these things come from within and defile the person. Good morning. Good morning. I'm grateful to be with you today for worship and fellowship. Thank you for being here this morning. God cares about our hearts. Yes, sir. Yeah. Our hearts are important. Our hearts are important to God. And if our hearts are important to God, well, then certainly our hearts ought to be important to us as well. Yes, sir. In the passage we just read, Jesus warns us that it is from out of our hearts that come evil thoughts, which lead to evil things, which defile us. And of course, Jesus is warning us about evil in our hearts because he cares. And not only does God care about our hearts, but he also desires our hearts. <laughs> Jesus tells us in Mark 12, verse 30, of the greatest commandment, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. But why does God care about our hearts? Well, I'll give you a few reasons why I think God cares about our hearts. First of all, God himself has a heart. Yes, sir. In Genesis 6, verses 5 through 6, it reads, Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of mankind was great on the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of their hearts was only evil continually. So the Lord was sorry that he had made mankind on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So God has a heart. Our hearts are also important to God because... It's a matter of righteousness and salvation. We know from Romans 10, verses 9 through 10, that if you confess with your mouth, excuse me, that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with a heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. And the other thing I would mention is that God cares about our hearts because our hearts are the battleground between good and evil. In Luke 6, 45, Jesus is speaking to us, and he says, The good person, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth what is good, and the evil person, out of the evil, tre- brings, and the evil person, out of the evil treasure, brings forth what is evil, for his mouth speaks from that which fills his heart. And because there are hearts of good treasure and there are hearts of evil treasure, the Bible makes mention of many, many kinds of hearts. The heart, after all, is the spiritual part of us where our emotions and our desires dwell. I've read that the Bible mentions the word heart nearly 1,000 times. 1,000 times in Scripture. So obviously when the, when the word heart or hearts are mentioned that frequently, 
It's something that is important yes, to God. And clearly, we're not going to get to 1,000 mentions of the heart. I think, uh, looking at my notes, we'll probably get to the first 400, but uh, <laughs> I kid. Um, so while it isn't my intention to make this a fully comprehensive lesson, I would like to make mention of some of the different kinds of hearts that are referenced in the Bible. And some of these kinds of hearts are hearts of, of evil treasure, and some of the kinds that we'll talk about are hearts of good treasure. And for our time, I'll make mention of the, the evil treasure hearts, because I, I want to make mention of the Bible speaks of these things, but we're going to spend more time discussing the good treasure hearts. And as we discuss, I would encourage all of us to honestly examine ourselves about the evil treasure hearts as well as the good treasure hearts. Honestly examine ourselves because after all, God knows our hearts. Yes, sir. The Bible warns us of the following evil treasure hearts. An obstinate heart. A proud, arrogant, and haughty heart. The Bible warns of a perverse heart, a bitter heart, a heart of stone. A senseless heart, an unrepentant heart. A heart of evil, an unbelieving heart, and a deceitful heart are all hearts that are not pleasing to God. Mm -hmm. And if we have such a heart, we need to have a heart transplant. We need to remove these kind of hearts and replace them with hearts of good treasure. Hearts such as the, is the ones that we're going to talk about this morning. God desires, and, and Wade had even mentioned it in the table talk, um, when he was talking about the giving talk portion of it, I should say, that God wants us to have a cheerful and joyful heart. God, does, God desires that we have cheerful hearts of joy, and not only when times are good and going well for us, we need to rejoice always. Now, life will and can be difficult. It'll be sad, frustrating, challenging, and painful. The world, however, cannot take away the one thing that should provide us the greatest cheer and joy in our lives, and that is our salvation mm -hmm. through Jesus. Amen. Whatever we may be enduring, it is good to have a heart that reminds us, regardless of our present circumstances, I still have eternal life. And not only should we be joyful and cheerful through our difficult times, we should be cheerful and joyful when others are experiencing blessed times in their lives. For we ought to rejoice with those who rejoice. Yes, sir. Proverbs 15, 13 tells us, A joyful heart makes a cheerful face, but when the heart is sad, the spirit is broken. Also from Proverbs 15 and verse 15, it reads, All the days of the needy are bad, but a cheerful heart has a continual feast. And in Proverbs 17, 22, A joyful heart is good medicine, but a broken spirit dries up the bones. So we should have a cheerful and a joyful heart. We should also have a tranquil heart. God desires that we have a tranquil heart and peace in our lives. God sent Jesus to die for our sins so that we might no longer be enemies of God, that we might have peace with him through his only begotten son, Jesus. God-given peace is a kind of peace that the world simply does not give. It is a peace of God that surpasses all understanding. And Jesus calls us to be peacemakers. And of course, peace is a fruit of the Spirit. And we are to have peace through godly contentment yes, with the things in our lives. Proverbs 14.30 tells us, A tranquil heart is life to the body, but jealousy is rottenness to the bones. God wants us to have a pure and clean heart. He wants us to have our hearts set on things which are good and holy and eternal. Jesus tells us in the Gospel of Matthew 5, verse 8, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. In Psalm 51, 10, cries out, Create in me 
a clean heart, God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. A cheerful, joyful, tranquil, pure, clean, and a trusting heart. God desires that we have a trusting heart. God wants us to trust him and depend on him completely. You know, most people that we encounter in our life, most everyone will speak of faith. Having faith isn't really anything that's particularly unique. The question isn't really, do you have faith? I think the better question might be, in what is your faith? Is our faith in ourselves, in our abilities, in our own intelligence, our jobs, our education, in our titles? Is our faith in our money? Or is our faith in Jesus? Proverbs 3.5 tells us, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Yes, sir. The Bible, brothers and sisters, the Bible does not speak highly of fools. To the contrary, God desires that we have a wise heart. A heart that yearns to better understand the nature of God and his ways. Get wisdom. Many of us might remember that from a few years ago. That was our, our theme for the year. Get wisdom. In Proverbs 10, verse 8, it reads, The wise of heart will receive commands, but a babbling fool will come to ruin. Also from Proverbs 16, verses 21 through 23, The wise in heart will be called understanding, and sweetness of speech increases persuasiveness. Understanding is a fountain of life to those who have it, but the discipline of fools is foolishness. The heart of the wise instructs his mouth and adds persuasiveness to his lips. And also from Proverbs, it reads, My son, if your heart is wise, my own heart also will be glad, and my innermost being will rejoice when your lips speak what is right. God desires that we hunger and thirst for righteousness, that we have an upright heart. He desires that while we were once slaves to sin, that we repent and become slaves to righteousness. That through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and Christ in us, that we become imitators of Jesus. In Psalm 32, 11, it says, Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, your right, you righteous ones, and shout for joy, all you who are upright in heart. The righteous person will be glad in the Lord and take refuge in him, and all the upright in heart will boast. In Psalm 97, 11 reads, Light is sown like seed for the righteous, in gladness for the upright in heart. God desires that we have a steadfast heart, a firm heart that does not fear the world nor the things in it, but trust in God always. We need to remain steadfast and firm in God's truth, immovable and rooted. Proverbs 57, 7 says, My heart is steadfast, God. My heart is steadfast. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises. In Psalm 112, verses 7 through 8 tells us, He will not fear bad news. His heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. His heart is firm. He will not fear, but will look with satisfaction to his enemies. God desires that we have a cheerful heart, a joyful heart, a tranquil heart, a pure heart, a clean heart, a trusting heart, a wise heart, an upright heart, a steadfast heart, and a firm heart. If I may, let me share some biblical warnings worth heeding when it comes to our hearts. Proverbs 23, 17 tells us, Do not let your heart envy sinners, but live in the fear of the Lord always. Put in other words, don't desire to live like those who practice sin. Instead, fear God. Proverbs 4.23 tells us, Watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it flow the springs of life. I would say, guard your heart, protect your heart, be alert, put on the full armor of God. Amen. 
In Hebrews, Hebrews 3.12 tells us, Take care, brothers and sisters, that there will not be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart that falls away from the living God. Brothers and sisters, we need to persevere, we need to endure, we need to remain faithful until the end. God cares about our hearts. Jesus says these things at the beginning of John chapter 14. He speaks to us and he says, Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If that were not so, I would have told you, because I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I am coming again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you will also be. And you know the way where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How do we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Amen. Jesus, our Lord and Savior, tells us, do not let your heart be troubled. Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. Each and every one of us can and should draw nearer to God. I know there are many Christians here this morning. For those of us that are already in Christ, may we continue to increase in our love, our love for God, and our love for others. May we continue to set our hearts and our minds on things which are good, holy, spiritual, and eternal. May we grow to become more and more like Jesus each and every day. There may be some of you this morning that are not yet Christians. We love you and encourage you to hear the words of Jesus when he said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Mm -hmm. All of us, every one of us here, every one you'll ever meet, has sinned and fallen short of God's glory. Amen. It is through our sin that we have separated ourselves from God. God loves you. That is the truth. God loves you. And the truth is that God loves you so much that he sent his only begotten son, Jesus, to come to this world to live a perfect, sinless life so that when he did lay down his life at the cross on Calvary and he sacrificed himself, he would be the perfect Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And it is only through Jesus that we can come, through the Father, come to the Father, that we can have forgiveness of our sins, that we can have salvation and receive the free gift of eternal life. To receive this free gift of eternal life, one must believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, repent from a life of sin, Confess Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. And to continue to live faithfully until the end. Now this may sound like a lot, but in truth it really isn't. You can become a Christian this very hour and receive eternal life through Jesus. So if there is anyone here that if it be your desire to be a Christian, please, please, let us know now. Let us know following the service. We would be filled with joy in our hearts to assist you immediately. Amen. I love you all. Thank you for your kind time and attention. May God bless the preaching of his word. Amen, brother.